Yeah. So you get drafted by the Chargers, you go to training camp, and... Yeah, so before the training camp, there's mini camps. So all, in all the mini camps, did extremely well. So that's on in the early summer. Now, later summer is training camp. So a week before the training camp, they had announced that I was their starter at, at offensive at left, left tackle. Okay. That it was my job to lose. So first day of training camp, I'm in the locker room getting suited up. I walk out. There's a bunch of media. I talk to them. They, you know, they just basically, hey, what does it feel like first day training camp? You're the starter at left tackle. A lot of pressure. You know, what's going through your mind? And I, I talked to them, and then I went down to the field. Uh, we got warmed up, and we split up by positions, like a normal practice. And so we're kind of getting ready for our first interaction with the defense. So you go through like a 40-minute period just with the offensive line. All the positions are scattered throughout the field. Then they blow the horn, bop, bop. And that's the first time where now mm -hmm. the first team defense is going to line up against the first team offense. And we're going to run probably 15 plays. It's all script. We're reading it off of a script. So we know what the plays are. They, they, um, and it was either the second or third play of that drill, very first drill live. So that, that play was a play where I'm at the left side of the line and I have to pull all the way down the line past the center on the opposite side of the line and come up and block the linebacker on the other side. I'm, so me, so I'm here, the guard is here, the center's here. So both me and the guard are doing this pulling down. He's going to go kick out this defensive end on this side, and I'm going to lead up the hole, and the running back is literally right behind me. So the linebacker that I had my eye on, he kind of dashed inside because of the running back kind of dipped inside, so that brought the linebacker, and I'm running full, full speed. Plant my foot, turn, and I feel something in my foot go, pop, break. I could hear it in my ear. And I was like, um, so I went down immediately. They literally, the trainers rushed to me, and they basically just moved the drill down like 10 yards and kept going. Oh, wow. They don't stop practice. Y yeah, they just they just keep going. Next guy up, right? What? So so the trainers are attending to me, and um, I I have a picture of me being escorted on a back of a of a cart up to the locker room, where they basically had put my my leg on a big cushion and packed it with ice, turned off the lights, and said, "We'll see you in an hour and a half." And I was all by myself, like. What? What exactly? What? What the heck is going on? And so a lot of emotions, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of, you can imagine what's running through my head. I couldn't put any weight on my foot. The doctors after practice come and look at me. They're pretty certain it's a torn um, uh, a ligament uh, in, in my foot. They run x-rays, sure enough, you could see the skeleton of my foot, the big toe and the little toe and all the other three toes, and you could see this flaky particle thing. That's where the ten a tendon attaches to the side of your arch had ruptured off the bone, like completely detached itself. And that tendon controls all the movement in your toes. So I was like, oh, great. Uh, and so the next day, I have an MRI scheduled because they needed to find a special MRI to fit me because I was, you know, a big guy. So I had to wait. Uh, so the next day, I'm, I'm watching the afternoon practice, and um, I just get discouraged. Um, my foot was in a brace, big brace, boop. I'm on a golf cart because I couldn't walk, and I'm just on crutches. So I, I took the cart back, and I headed back to my dorm room at, at the campus we were having training camp at, and I get on the rotary phone, because we had no cell phones. Yeah. I get on, we didn't have digital phones. Everything was turned rotary. I call my wife who was in our, in our apartment in, in San Diego, see how she was doing. And um, she, I was like this, man. I was an emotional wreck for, for 24 hours at least, maybe more. Uh, none of my teammates could even come up to me and talk to me because they, it was just, there was so much hype built up about me to have this injury happen and for 
because the, the, the papers the very next day said go is gone, basically saying my career was done. Wow. That was the headline news of the, of the San Diego Tribune was go is gone. So they thought my career, they thought my season was done, but maybe even my career was done. Oh my goodness. That I would never be able to recover from something like this. Yeah. But the MRI was the, was the kind of thing they were waiting on, right? Because to that point, they had only taken an x-ray. Um, so I, I go back, I call my wife in that afternoon, and she's like all upbeat, sharing things that, that God was showing her. She was just scouring through scripture, and uh, she had started a prayer chain back in Hawaii, people praying for me to get healed, and she wants to share with me what God had put in her heart. And so I'm, I'm listening, I, I said, yeah, by all means, I want to hear. And so she, she um, turns to... Ephesians 6, um, starting in verse 10, and I think it's through verse 18, where, where Paul is basically talking about this, the putting on the armor, mm -hmm. and that it's a not, a, not a battle of flesh and blood, blood, but of principalities and powers in high places, and then it goes to enlist all the armor. So as she's reading this, I'm, imagine me, I'm laying down on a couch, my foot is kind of propped up, and I'm listening to her on this rotary phone, and I feel a, um, I feel a urgency or I, it was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. telling me to take the brace off. Okay. So I buckle it off and I feel, start to feel as she's like finishing that portion of scripture the first time, I ask her to read it a second time. And as she's doing it again, I start to feel like Almost like when you're on a when you have a limb that goes like you lose circulation and it goes numb and then and then the blood flow comes back and you feel that tingling. Mm -hmm. I, f I felt something similar to that in my left leg as I'm taking off the thing, and I realize as she's reading it, I get prompted to move my foot. Which pr prior to putting that boot on, I couldn't move my foot any anything not even the slightest without feeling like it was somebody just jabbing a mm -hmm. sharp object into it i start moving my foot around with no pain like i'm doing like flexing my toes and then by that time i'm standing up and she has no idea what's going on she's still reading the verse the verses to me I ask her to read it a third time by that time i'm standing up walking around my dorm room and i just start weeping like heaving Wow. Knowing that what was happening. And she goes, are you okay? What's wrong? And I share with her what, what, what was taking place. And so we just had a uh, amazing time of Thanksgiving. And so a few hours later, the trainer picks me up, takes me to the hospital for the MRI. I get put in, you know, get set for the MRI. They will woo me into the big tube. I don't know if you ever had an MRI, but it's a big tube. Mm -hmm. And you, you're basically like this, and you can't really move at all. And uh, they put some headset, a headset on me with some music. And for 55 minutes in that MRI machine, the enemy was taunting and just, just speaking lies into my brain. Uh, lies like, you didn't get healed. It's, you, you believe you got healed? You didn't get healed. You're going back to Hawaii and you're going to be a freaking security guard. <laughs> just stupid <laughs> stuff. Right. And so finally I just started getting mad. And I just, being a, still a kind of a baby, babe in Christ, I knew some scriptures by heart, by memory. Greater is he than is, that is in me than he that is in the world. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So for a big chunk of that 55 minutes, I'm literally yelling those scriptures in the tube, in the MRI tube. Um, this trainer picks me up when I'm done. I sleep like a baby that night in, in anticipation for what's going to come out of the MRI the next morning. So I go to the training room the next morning. Uh, the trainer, the head trainer, who happened to be a, a local Hawaii guy, um, he sees me coming in. He weighs me to the back, and the first thing out of his mouth is, kind of talking our little Hawaiian little slang, brah, I don't know what happened from yesterday, but 
your MRI is completely clean. They can't find anything wrong with your foot. Wow. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, thank you, Jesus. So I was just like the loudest I could scream. I was like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so, wow. so God healed me on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, I went and played my whole rookie year. Yeah. And to make things, I think God has an amazing sense of humor. He allowed me to be, become a consensus all-rookie. So every, every like, um, all the big publications have their own all-rookie team. Mm -hmm. I made every single one of them Man. as a rookie. Um, it was just, I think God allowed my wife and I both to walk mm -hmm. through this, yeah. this, this really dark, difficult time, mm -hmm. knowing that we we're going to have to rely on Him. We we're going to have to depend on Him. We're going to have to cry out to Him yeah. to deliver us from that to it was it was like almost like the Egyptians when they crossed over the river, God had them go back and grab stones out of the middle of the river mm -hmm. and build an altar as a remembrance so they could they could testify that to future generations. That was yeah. kind of like our remembrance where we could always go back years later when when life happens wow. and difficult times come to to just say between her and I, remember when. 